One of the coolest things about this game is that people are slowly still getting into Marvel Champions, which is phenomenal to see. It's really cool to see. Every single time I stream either here on YouTube over on twitch.tv backslash d20 and woodworking, people make comments about how they just got in this game, they found these videos and whatever, and it's really amazing. But I realize I haven't done a video yet of how to play. And I know there's other how to play videos out there, but they recently did, I think it was in May or June, somewhere around there, they did the 1.5 rules update and it changed a a fair amount of things in the game, right? And including some basic things in the game that I think if you're getting into the game the first time, some of the older rules videos won't really touch upon. So we are going to do that in this game. So what are we going to do? We're going to play Marvel Champions. I'm going to show you a Marvel Champions game, but we're going to take everything step by step. I'm going to probably over explain some things, hopefully explain enough things. Um, but that's what we're going to do. We're, it's going to take a really slow time, go through, uh, go through it, make sure we cover all of our bases. And uh, hopefully this helps you get started with Marvel Champions or we just need another rules primer to kind of get you going again. So the very first thing we got to do in Marvel Champions, select our identity. All right, so when you first start set up, uh, this is on page 43 of the 1.5 rule book. It's appendix two and set up, and we're just going to go through this step by step. Uh, and if you need to find a new copy of the rules of the 1.5 rules or anything like that, in case your copy has an older version or something like that, it's it will be linked down below, but it's also on Fantasy Flight's website. So first thing we have to do is select your identity. Each player selects one identity, placing the alter ego side face up. So one thing I'll note really quick, because uh, people are going to ask, this mat is a Game Genix mat. Uh, that I got from them. The sleeves are Dragon Shield, and I'm also going to put out some accessories. They are from Buy the Same Token. Uh, just in case your stuff looks a little bit different than mine, that's why. Just important note, because I know people will ask. So very first thing, we're going to select your identity, place the Alter Ego side face up. So we're going to have Peter Parker, and that is who we're going to select and put his Alter Ego face side up. Then we set our hit point dial to the number of uh, starting hit points that they have. Now, I don't use hit point dials. I use tokens because I'm just a big fan of tokens. So we're going to set his life to 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. We'll go all the way across there. That's fine. Okay. So the way that we got this was down here. It says 10 hit points. So that's what his maximum hit points are. So that's what we set it to. And again, we have... 10 life around on the board. So we select the first player. I play a lot of true solo, so I'm always the first player, uh, but this is just whoever you wanna be. It could, it could be you, your friend, whatever, it doesn't really matter. So let's take our, our first player token and put it on our board so we're ready to go. So now we have to set aside obligations. Now, when we go into this, it's important to note for all your heroes, you're going to have 15 hero cards that kind of look like this. And you'll be able to tell it's a hero card because in the bottom corner, it's going to have uh, Spider-Man's face and then one out of 15, for example, because uh, he has 15 cards. Some heroes have more than 15 cards. It's important to note, uh, but you're going to grab all of his cards. When you grab all of his cards, there's going to be cards that look a little bit different, right? And their backs are going to be different. They're going to look like encounter cards instead of player cards that have the blue back on them. So of these, there are going to be five of one kind, usually five of one kind and one of a different kind. The different kind one just says Spider-Man at the bottom and up the top left, it says obligation. So that's how we know we're going to set aside this player's obligation. Then as far as the treachery cards, we're going to um, also set them aside. And step five of the rule book is to set aside Nemesis set. That is what this is, right? This is your Nemesis set. And again, we can tell on the bottom, Spider-Man Nemesis, three out of five, one, two, three, four, five cards. We are going to set them aside as well. The next step is to shuffle player decks. Now, one of the things is, is that they don't say in this, um, in the rules is that you want to build your deck first, right? So the, the general rule for building cards or I'm sorry, building a deck in this game is that you can have between 40 and 50 cards. Very generally speaking, it's better to have 40 cards than 50 because these cards that are your, your hero cards are probably your stronger cards and you want to get them as much as possible. So the deck that I have built is actually the deck that you can find in the back of the um, regular rulebook, the, the how to play rulebook, right? Not the rules reference, but the other one uh, under the Spider-Man section. This is... This is what they recommend. It's not the best deck in the world. I'm going to be completely honest, but we're going to try it. Uh, this is a 40 card deck. Now, just really quick for deck building rules, just so that you know. Again, you have to use all your heroes cards. You can choose to use basics. You don't have to, uh, but you must pick an aspect. And then when you pick an aspect, you can include any amount of cards of that aspect uh, of total, assuming you don't go over the 50 card limit, right? So 
basically I'm picking justice and we have a bunch of justice cards in here. There could be more justice cards or there could be fewer justice cards, right? Like I just want you to understand that there doesn't have to be a certain amount of justice cards. You're just picking the justice aspect and putting in as many as you want and then filling the rest in with uh, basic cards. So the other important note is that you have some cards like Nick Fury here who has that little star symbol. That means you can only have one copy of Nick Fury uh, in your deck, right? You're not allowed to have more copies. You can only have one and he can be the only one on the table when he's playing. The way that the, the reason that this is important is because if you're playing multiplayer, you could put a Nick Fury in your deck and your teammate could put a Nick Fury in their deck, but you can't have two Nick Furies on the table. So I could put Nick Fury, he could leave the table, then my teammate could put Nick Fury in later on. Hopefully that makes sense. As far as any other card that does not have that star symbol, so for example, let's say Avengers Mansion does not have that star symbol, um, but it does say max one per player. So we can only have one per player on the table. That's an important rule to note. But we could have several in our deck if we chose to. Same thing here with uh, Heroic Intuition, right? Max one per player, uh, playing under the player's control. So I could play under my teammate's control if I really wanted to. We could have a bunch of them in our deck because there's no star symbol, but we can only put one into play. Now cards like Surveillance Team instead... It has no star symbol and doesn't have a max. So what we could do is put several copies of this card into play. So if we, we have two in our deck, we could put both these cards into play if we so choose, right? It's important to know. All right, so that's that. We are now going to do um, step six, which is to shuffle the deck up. All right, so this is all shuffled up. I zoomed out a little bit so we can get more space because now we have to collect tokens and status cards and all that fun stuff. Like I said, I use a bunch of tokens and stuff. Uh, you can choose to or choose not to. I personally really recommend uh, ready tokens and exhaust tokens because it, it's easier than just like exhausting your cards and taking up a ton of space. That's my one recommendation. So now we have to select a scenario. So select a scenario and put its villain deck and main deck or main scheme deck in the play area near the center of the play area. So as I said earlier, we are going to be playing Claw. And then once again, you can see with Claw that he has three out of, or I'm sorry, 21 cards. Uh, so we just get all of his cards in his deck. And then we take his villain cards, which are signified up here that they are villain cards and we're going to be playing on standard on expert the rules are slightly different but i wouldn't worry about that too much right now so you grasp the rules so on standard you're going to take claw one in the top right here you see a one that is what we're going to put into play first so claw one is going to come into play and the other thing you do is you look for these things that say main scheme and you start with one a so on the back of one a it will state the contents of this of this deck, right, with Claw and everything, and then uh, what you use for Expert instead, and then you use this uh, Claw and Standard counter sets. Generally speaking, your Standard sets can be used in almost every single game. There's like one, maybe two scenarios that don't use the Standard cards, but they look like this. Uh, in the bottom left, it says Standard. There's seven of them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This one, this one gets talked about a lot. So if you're wondering what that is, uh, that gets talked about a lot. And this is this card is how your Nemesis cards are going to come into play. A lot of people have that question, has the Nemesis cards come into play? That is how. Okay, so we grab our standard uh, kit scenario. And then we also, it says one modular encounter set right there. And it recommends Master of Evil. You can change this to be any modular set you want. And this is one of the cool things about Marvel Champions. It can be anything that you want. So you can change it how you want. We're just going to use Masters of Evil that it recommends just so you can get a feel for it. All right. So here is the Masters of Evil set. We're going to take that. And we're going to put uh, that right next to it. So we have the main scheme in the play. We collected our decks. We did everything set up there. We would set the villain hit points as well. Um, once again, you would put a bunch of, uh, for me, put a bunch of tokens. He has 12 hit points. So we will put 12 next to him in total. So hopefully that you can see that. Okay. And then now we have to create the encounter deck. So we shuffle the encounter sets listed on 1A that we kind of already collected with the obligation card, which is this card that we put aside, set aside earlier. Um, with the obligation card, uh, shuffle it all together, right? So again, claw set, master of evil, standard, or obligation. All this gets shuffled up. And as we shuffle this, we are now creating our encounter deck. And we're going to put that slightly off to the side. The next step we're going to do is put setup cards for a hero into play. Now, our hero doesn't have a setup on this side, so we don't have to worry about doing that. But some do, so you would do whatever the setup thing is that you have to do then we have to resolve the scenario setup and any when revealed abilities so the first thing we have to do on this card is look at setup okay search the encounter deck for defense network side scheme reveal it shuffle the encounter deck advance to 1b 
So we're looking for a defense, defense network. There it is. And we reveal it. Revealing and putting in play are two different things. And you have to like catch yourself with these terms. When you reveal things, you do what's on the card. When you put in the play, you don't. And that's very, very broad. It might not make 100% sense right now, but it will in the future. Um, so when revealed and put in the play are two different things. Just know that for now. So when revealed for this card, we would place one additional threat here per person on this card. So right now we are going to put two threat on. We're playing a true solo game. So we put a third one on. So we put this off to the side and we take two threat three threat now this symbol here is the crisis icon I, the exclamation point is what i call it a lot <laughs> uh so this is important this means that we cannot remove threat from the main scheme and it's worded that way specifically uh which is kind of important just know that right now it means you cannot remove any threat off the main scheme so we advance this to 1b and 1b is on the just on the other side and there's some flavor text and it says one reveal discard cards from the encounter deck until a minion is discarded put that minion into play engage with the first player now the one thing we didn't do yet is shuffle i don't think we shuffle these cards again so we'll do that the one other thing i will note is on the bottom here it has a zero and then it has a one on top whatever that bottom number is is how much threat that scheme starts with right so if there was a two there it would start with two threat there's a three yada yada, yada. it starts with zero so we put zero in here so we do exactly what it says. Discard cards from the encounter deck until a minion is discarded. Put that minion in the play. Now, th this was oddly perfect. So we are putting that minion into play. We are not revealing that minion. The reason that this is important is because a card like this says surge. So after this card is revealed, reveal one additional encounter card. It was not revealed. It was put into play. This is one of the first tricky rules things that you're going to kind of get into and you're going to learn that there's some there's some rules that can be a little weird at times uh this is one of them this is one of the ones that can be a little weird he is put into play so we do not resolve the surge now if we're just playing the game normally and he would come out and he'd be revealed we would revo uh, reveal the surge so hopefully that makes sense and, and clears things up a little bit uh, but it's a little bit tricky so don't feel bad if you get that wrong uh your couple first times next would be uh, resolving campaign set. We are not playing a campaign, so we do not have to worry about that at all. All right, so now we get to draw cards, right? So we're going to draw cards equal to our starting hand. Um, on the bottom here, on the bottom left, it says hand size six. We are going to draw up to six cards. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Now, it's kind of hard to tell you what to look for. Generally speaking, when you're building a deck, there are certain key cards that I have in mind that I go, oh, that'd be really good to have, and I really want those cards. Um, I don't know how to explain that to you now until you get into deck building, but just know there's certain cards you probably want to look out for. For me, when I look at this setup, I want to get rid of the defense network because I want to keep this main scheme down because the way we're going to lose the game is either this main scheme advances to the next one and the next one advances all the way and then it's done. We lose. Some, some games, there's only one main scheme and if it advances, it'll say at the bottom, like you lose the game if it hits the max amount. The max amount is in the top left here. So each round is going to go up one per person. There's only one person. And if it hits six, we advance the main scheme. And if there is a next, uh, an, another main scheme to advance to, then we go to the next one. If there's not, then we lose the game. The other way we can lose the game is if the villain does enough damage or the villain and or minions do enough damage to take out all of our life, right? So we have 10 life. If we lose all of our life, then we lose the game. Now, the way we win the game is pretty simple. Generally speaking, we just have to defeat the villain. With standard, you have to defeat defeat villain one and villain two right on expert would be villain two and then and villain three just in case you're wondering why there's three of them uh so that's how we win the game now there are certain scenarios later on that change it up a bit we're not going to worry about them right now but there are uh, scenarios that do things a little bit differently really quick i also realized i forgot to mention that when we were resolving uh the one revealed here if there was a when revealed on the villain you would also resolve that right after you resolve this one. Um, I just didn't do it because there wasn't one on there, but if there was, you, you would do that as well. So we drew our cards and these are our six cards that we have. Uh, one great card is webbed up, but it's really expensive. So let's go over the anatomy of a card really fast. In the top left here is the cost of the card, right? So how do you pay for a card? Well, there's little resource icons in the bottom of all your, all your cards. These are how you're gonna pay for your cards. So. 
for a four cost card, I have to use four resources. Now it could be any resources, unless a card specifically states it has to use certain resources, it could be any resource. So for example, if I wanted to play this card on the table, one, two, three, four, I would throw away four cards because it has four resources on it. Some cards will have two resources on it. So in that case, I'd be able to throw away uh, one with two resources on it, and another one and another one, that'd be four total. And that's how you play the card. Upgrades and supports and allies come out onto the table and are played out on the table. Um, events are just played and then discarded, right? So they don't stay out there on the table. But we're not going to get into that too much right yet because we still have to finish doing set. We're almost done with setup. I don't want great responsibilities. So what we're going to do now is called mulligan, right? So the way that you, you do a mulligan is that you may discard any number of cards. Right? You can discard zero cards all the way up to your entire hand, and then you draw back up to your starting hand size, whatever the amount is. So for us, it's six. I don't want these two cards. Um, I do want that one. I do not want that one. I do want that one. And I do want that, I think. So we're going to throw away these three cards. They go into our discard pile, which we're just going to put off to the side here. Uh, you will have an opportunity for the discard pile to shuffle back in, but we're not going to worry about that right now. And we're going to draw back up to our starting hand size, which is six. So one, uh, four, five, six. So these are our six starting cards that we have. The very last thing is you resolve character setup abilities, resolve any setup instructions listed on the identity cards. We talked about this a little bit earlier that if there was a setup, um, you would have to set, or I'm sorry, put setup cards into play or you have to set certain things aside. Read the rule book. Um, it kind of explains what you do there, but now you would actually just resolve the setup on, on whatever the hero is. Peter Parker doesn't have a setup. So anyway, that's all of setup. We are completely done now. All we have to do now is actually start to play the game. So once again, like I said, we want to be able to control this main scheme. We want to keep this down as much as possible. If it goes up to six, we go to the next main scheme. If that one gets up to its max amount, which is like six or nine or something like that, uh, then we lose the game. If the villain and or minions do enough damage to us to defeat us, we lose the game. And if we defeat the villain and stage two of the villain, we win the game. Now, very generally speaking, some rules that you need to know. Your alter ego, you cannot attack on your alter ego. You cannot defend on your alter ego. The only thing you can do is recover. So we will look really quick at our card. In the top left here, it has recovery. That means how much we can heal back. Very generally speaking, you cannot heal over your, your maximum hit points. Actually, you really can't. I don't think there's a situation where you can yet. Um, so you can't heal over your maximum hit points. So we have full life at 10. So there's no sense in recovering. Uh, because it's not going to do anything. Now, let's say we only had four life left. We could exhaust this to add three life back. We'd be up to seven out of 10. We'd be doing a little bit better. So on the hero side, we're allowed to flip from alter ego to hero or hero to alter ego once a game. We can't do a flip and then another flip. You're only allowed to flip your card once. Now, there are cards later on that you can play that allow you to flip your hero. That doesn't count as you choosing to do that action right so you're allowed to do the action of flipping your hero which is just you yourself doing this card nothing else is forcing you to do it you're allowed to do it once per uh, round really quick uh talking about how a round is done uh this is on page four the 1.5 rules reference it, it has a very short summary of what it is and i think it's important to note um so one player phase begins Two, each player takes a turn. Three, the villain phase begins. Four, the villain phase ends. Five, uh, or I'm sorry, villain phase begins. Five, you place main threat or a threat on the main scheme. The villain and minions activate. You deal encounter cards. You reveal and resolve the encounter cards. You pass the first player token. That's the end of the round. That's the very basic general gist of how the round works overall. It's just important to keep that in the back of your mind. That's the round as a whole. And then there's phases. So there's a player phase where you take your turns and then your phase ends. Then there's a villain phase, which is an entirely separate thing. They do all their stuff, then their phase ends. So you will see some cards that say happens during a phase or whatever. It's only during that certain time. It's not the entire round. So there isn't a difference between rounds and phases. Player phase and villain phase, and those combined make one round. All right, so we drew our cards. Uh, we're all set up, ready to go. So what we're going to do is look through our cards and think about 
how we want to move things around. We talked about how we want to get rid of this. I want to defeat this. So there's a couple of ways we can do this. Now, the very first important thing to note is on your alter ego side and your hero side, there's going to be text box at the bottom and it says something you can do. So for Peter Parker, he's a scientist. He can generate a science resource limit once per round. And then Spider-Man has spider sense. He can initiate an attack or when a villain initiates attack against you, you get to draw a card, which we'll get into in a second. So I want to use the science resource. So when we generate the resource, we have to use the resource. I can't just like generate it and then do some other stuff and then, then use the resource, right? We're generating the resource to use it. So what I actually want to use that for is a card called Spider Tracer. So it's a one cost upgrade and we attach it to a minion. When attached minion is defeated, remove three threat from the scheme. So we're going to generate the one resource. We're going to pay for it because it has a one cost. And we're going to do exactly what it says, which is to attach it to a minion. If the camera would focus, attach it to a minion. It is going to be attached to weapons runner here. That's all I'm going to do on my alter ego side. Uh, pretty sure at least. Yes, that's all I'm going to do on my alter ego side. So what we are going to do is flip up to our hero side. Now we talked a little bit about how we're allowed to do this uh, once. So now I'm flipped up. I'm not allowed to flip back down, right? I'm only allowed to flip up the once. So our stat line is one, two, three with 10 health, five hand size. Now, what does that mean? One thwart means we can remove one threat from a scheme. Two attack means we can do two damage to something as maybe we'll do to this weapons runner. And then defending uh is we can defend for three and then again we'll worry about this text box in a little bit and then our hand size is five so we don't discard down to our hand size it's just when we draw back up to our hand size we would only draw up to five cards so if you had six cards in your hand still and you flip to your hero side you don't discard down to five you would hold on uh, to whatever you have that's just what you draw back up to I will also note at this point, again, on rules reference at 1.5, I'm on page 28 under player turn. Uh, a lot of these rules will, will what I'm doing will be explained there. So in case you want to see it written out, it'll be right there. So the first thing I want to do is I think I'm going to exhaust to attack, right? So we talked about that we could thwart, we could attack, we could defend. There's nothing to defend right now. So we could really attack or thwart. I'm going to exhaust Spider-Man to attack two. Now, I could choose who to attack right now. If I want to attack Claw, I can attack Claw. If I can attack, if I wanted to attack Weapons Runner, I can attack Weapons Runner. There are instances later on where uh, enemies will have keywords that say guard. Uh, and that means I can't attack the villain unless I defeat the guard keyword first. We don't have to worry about that right now. That's just important to note for later on when you're playing. So we're going to deal two damage to Weapons Runner. Now, the anatomy of his card is pretty simple. He does one scheme, which means adding threat onto, I'm sorry, the main scheme, one attack for when they do damage to us. And over here is how much life they have. He only has two life. So my two attack does his two life. We just subtract, right? So we start with two life. We do two damage, we minus two. We're down to zero. He has zero. He is now out of here. Now this card states, it's a force interrupt. When attached, uh, minion is defeated and we just defeated that minion remove three threat from a scheme right this is gonna be any scheme so we're gonna remove three threat from this scheme we're gonna get rid of this and there's no text that on here it says when completed or anything like that um, sometimes they do they say when completed and you have to do a special thing but as of now we just put that into the discard pile so that's the discard pile and we have to get rid of this token because it's no longer in play so it's no longer in effect um okay so what we're gonna do is I'm actually going to throw away all these cards. Um, should we? Yeah, I'm gonna throw away all four of these cards to play webbed up, okay? So one, two, three, four. These are gonna be our four resources down here. Uh, energy, 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 mental. To pay the four cost upgrade. Now the card states hero form only, which means we're on our hero form. So that's the only way we can play this card is if we're on a hero form only. Attached to an enemy. Max one per enemy. So we put it on the enemy. And then it states when attached enemy would attack, you discard webbed up instead. Then stun that enemy. And we'll get into all that in one second. But basically, it's not going to be able to do anything for two rounds. All right. So that's everything I can do in my, in my turn. I have no more cards. I have nothing else that I can do. Um, so at the very end of your turn, you ready up your hero and you would ready up any cards on the table and you draw back up to your max hand size. So for us, it's five cards. So one, two, three, four, five. 
We can look at our cards. First aid, heroic, backflip, heroic. Okay, these are some cards I don't want right now, but that's okay. And then that is the end of the player phase, right? Everything on the player phase is done. Now we would go into the villain phase. All right, so for the villain phase, again, I'm going to be going through the rules, uh, 1.5 rules on page 39. It's listed under villain phase. So if you are you know, uh, want to see it written out, you can see it there. First thing we have to do is we have to place uh, the amount of threat indicated in the main scheme's acceleration field by... Um, by whatever it is. So for example, right now it's just one. There are times that an acceleration token can be put on here and be higher than one, but we don't have to worry about that right now. So it's one per player. That's what that little symbol means. So we take one threat and we place it on here. We're gonna check it's not higher than six, so we're good, right? We don't we don't advance the scheme. That is fine. So in Player order, and again, we're just playing true solo, but the way it would work in player or order is the villain would first activate against that player and then the minions, right? And then you would go to like the next player. Starts with first player, then second player, then third, then fourth, yeah, yeah, yeah. So now for us, the villain would activate against us. But here's the thing, because we played webbed up and it says when attached enemy would attack. So when they activate, they either attack or they scheme. Those are the two activations they generally do. What they do is based off of what form you're in. So in hero form, they want to attack us. In alter ego form, they're going to scheme on the main threat. Okay, those are the two big differences now. So generally speaking, there are exceptions to that rule, but that's very generally speaking. So he is going to activate against us and he's going to want to attack, but he can't attack because of webbed up. So what it states is, is that oops, when attached enemy would attack, discard webbed up instead, then stun the enemy. So we discard that. So again, when attached enemy would attack, you discard webbed up instead. So he doesn't attack. We're just discarding this card instead. And now we're placing a stun token onto um, Claw. So now he is stunned, right? So it doesn't discard this and then remove the stun or anything like that. He is now stunned. We'll get into what stun means in a second. We don't have to worry about that. Um, but that's just important to know how that, that interaction works. Now... Step three is we deal one encounter card to each player, okay? And if there were other things that modify this, we would deal more encounter cards, we don't have to worry about that right now. So we just deal the one. Then we're going to reveal the encounter card. So we flip it over and it is assault. Okay, interesting. So there's two different texts. When the when revealed, if you're an alter ego, but we're not, you would do one thing. So we're not an alter ego, so we don't have to worry about that. And it states, uh, when revealed hero, we are in hero form, the villain attacks you. So now the villain would initiate attack against us. But because we did webbed up, uh, we discarded webbed up last time, and now he is stunned according to the card. Stunning takes place of the activation, okay? So he doesn't actually attack or anything. Instead, we just remove the stun um we remove the stun token with the with the base game. It's like a little, a little card. You would just remove that instead. So that's all that happens, right? Normally he would attack, but he doesn't do that because he was stunned. Stunned replaces that activation. So that's it for his turn. Now you would pass the first player over. Uh, sometimes at the end, there's like villain, when the villain's uh, phase ends or, you know, after the villain's phase ends or, or wording like that, you would do that thing as well. But there is none of that right now, so we don't have to worry about that. So now it goes back to our turn. And this is the pattern. It just passes back and forth like this very generally speaking. So as Spider-Man, um, I like the idea of throwing away two cards. We're going to pay uh, two resources to put in heroic intuition. So we're allowed to place one on our table or one uh, place one uh, under the player's control, max one per player. And we get plus one thwart is what this says on this card. So it means exactly what it says, where we normally would have one thwart. Oops, it's not focusing. We normally have one thwart. Now we have two thwart ability. So there's one here. So we could exhaust to clear this, or we could do two damage on the claw. I think for right now, I'm just going to do the damage onto claw. So we're going to deal two damage on the claw. I'm going to remove this by two. And then uh, he only has 10 health left. Now... We're at the end of the round, or at the end of the phase, I'm sorry, and I have two cards left in my hand. You don't have to hold on to these cards. What you can do instead is throw away cards. You could throw away one, I could throw away both if I didn't want them, or I could hold on to both. It doesn't really matter. I'm not gonna want heroic intuition, so I'm going to throw away that card and hold on to back foot. So now at the end of our, our phase, we're gonna ready up our cards and we're gonna draw back up to our hand size, which is five. So we're holding on to one, so it's already at one, two, three, 
four, five. All right, so we have our hand size out there of five cards. And now it goes back to the villain phase. So we look at the acceleration icon. This goes up by one. So now he has two threats on there. Now, Claw and the way he works is a little different. He attacks for zero, but there's that little star next to it. That little star tells us to look down here and it does a force interrupt. There's interrupts and there's responses. Interrupts generally happen before the thing. Responses generally happen after the thing. It's a very broad oversimplification of it, but just think of it that way. Interrupts happen before the thing. Responses happen after the thing. So what's he doing? He's attacking. So we're going to interrupt the attack. So it's going to happen before the attack. When Claw attacks, give him one additional boost card for this activation. Now, what does that mean? When the villains attack, normally they would attack and they would get one face down card when we decide if we want to defend against this attack or we want to block it with an ally or we want to do something else. So this is a normal villain setup. They would take whatever this number is, let's say it was one, and they would add it by um, this card, which has a, a amount of boost icons from zero to, well, I think it's up to four now. But generally speaking, it's gonna be zero to three boost icons. So he could do anywhere, let's say he had normally one attack, he could do anywhere between one and four attack now claw on the other hand only is swinging for zero he's still attacking he's just attacking for zero so instead of just getting one boost card he gets two boost cards so now we have to think about what we want to do against these two boost cards but before we do that we have to look at our hero ability which is spider sense and it's interrupt when the villain initiates an attack against you what does that mean? Initiating an attack is just the very beginning of the attack phase right like when he's like first like hey I'm about to attack you we're going to interrupt that attack to draw one card. Spider-Man's timing can be a little weird. And this is why I picked Spider-Man because you like learning interrupts and responses and all that stuff is a big part of the game and it can be a little tough. So when the villain initiates an attack against you, he's, he's working on attacking me, right? He's initiating it and we're going to interrupt it. So we're interrupting the attack. We get to draw a card. Hey, it's a double, um, which is actually really nice. So we get to draw a card first. So now we will get to decide right now if we want to exhaust the defend three, we talked about defending, uh, we would be able to defend three if we want to. Now, the important note with this is on the villain phase, when you exhaust the defend, you don't automatically ready back up. You don't get to do that until the end of the player phase. So we wouldn't get to attack or anything like that. We'll go in more detail about that a little bit later. I don't want to exhaust. I'm going to take whatever this hit is. I don't care what it is. So it's going to be zero. And then we turn over these cards. So this is perfect. In the bottom here, there's a few different symbols. There are boost icons, and then there's like a star icon. The boost icons is what we count for attack. So it's zero plus the two, he's gonna do two damage. You do not include this in the amount of damage, okay? It's just these little like weird triangle looking things. That's all it gets included. So it's zero plus two, it's two damage, but, before we do that, we have to do whatever the star says. So if this activation deals damage to you, exhaust your hero. So he is doing two damage. We are not blocking or anything, right? So normally we would get two damage and we'd have to exhaust our hero because the activation would deal damage to us. But we have a card to get around that. So we have a zero cost event. So it's free to play. And it says interrupt. It's a defense card. When you would take any amount of damage um, from an attack, prevent all of that damage so we're gonna play backflip so we don't take any damage again it's interrupting the damage so this doesn't trigger where it says if this activation deals damage to you it's never gonna deal damage to us so we don't have to worry about that he's attacking for two it would hit us but we're gonna backflip out of the way so when we would take any amount of damage from the attack we prevent all of that damage so all this gets discarded and we take zero damage overall because of our backflip really good card to have so that's the end of that uh part of it then we get our encounter card and we reveal it which is oh, okay cool uh the villain and each minion engage with you attacks you now there are no minions so we don't have to worry about that which is nice but he is going to attack us again now important note he's going to get his his face down cards we get to do our interrupt again there's nothing on it that says max one per uh phase or anything like that there's there's none of that wording so we get to do it again so he's going to attack us we get to draw a card okay it's another double um hmm, interesting so it's another double that's fine so he's going to attack we're going to defend this time so you can see what defending looks like so i exhaust my hero and we're defending three all right so he's going to attack for zero 
Ooh, a big attack. Three plus one. So zero plus three is three, plus one is four. So it's four damage minus my three defense is one damage onto us. So I'm going to reduce my life by one. So now I have eight, nine life left. This all gets discarded now. And that is the end of his phase. Now it goes to us. Now we're exhausted, so we can't thwart and we can't attack with our hero. But we can play things from our hand, which is super nice. So what we're going to do is we're going to use... These were the doubles I was talking about earlier. You can see in the bottom of a double, they have two resource icons. And we're allowed max one of one genius and one energy per deck, and one strength is the other one. So I'm going to use um, what's known as a yellow double, the power of justice. We're allowed two in our deck. Double the number of resources this card generates for playing a justice, which is a yellow card. So this is going to generate two resources for yellow cards, and we're going to use two for this to play Daredevil. Now, Daredevil is a four cost. So we're generating two here and two here. So that's four total. And uh, he's going to have two attack, or I'm sorry, two threat removal, two attack, three life. And after Daredevil thwarts, deal one damage to an enemy. We'll worry about that in one second. So I throw away all my resources. He comes into play. I'm going to put a ready token on him. So I know he's ready to go. Now, with this ally, what we're going to do is, is show how they work. So we're going to exhaust this ally to thwart two. We could attack two, but we're going to thwart two. So we would thwart two off of a scheme and under here is a little uh, star symbol. That means consequential damage. So we're going to exhaust this card to thwart two off of here. There's, hey, there's two on here. So we get rid of that too. And we take one consequential damage. So Daredevil has three life. We have one damage on our daredevil and he is exhausted we could we can no longer use him uh this round now it does state as a response so after daredevil thwarts so we just thwarted deal one damage to an enemy so we'll deal one on the claw so he goes from 10 down to nine so that's five six seven eight nine life left onto claw now what i'm going to do is play a swinging web kick this is our big attack it costs three and it's a hero action. We get to deal eight damage to an enemy. So we need to get three uh, resources worth. We're going to use one, two, three. So we throw away three. And we get to do a swinging web kick, which means we get to deal eight damage to Claw. So he has five, six, seven, eight, nine life left. So he would be down to one life. And then we throw away this card. And there's nothing else I can do. So we will ready not only our hero up, but we also get to ready Daredevil up. And then we get to draw our five cards. One, two, three, four, five. Get to look at them. Double yellow, Avengers Mansion. Oh, okay, lots of attacks, which is cool. So now we go back to the villain phase. Once again, one main scheme or main one threat goes onto there, which is cool. Claw is going to attack. He's going to get two. Uh, cards. Now, what we could do if we really wanted to is we could have Daredevil um, take the block for us, right? If we wanted to. I'm not going to do that because I want Daredevil for another round. Um, so we're going to have Spider Man eventually do it. But remember, when the villain initiates attack against you, you is one of the most complicated things in this game, and you will see a lot of questions that ask about you. Um, one of the things I will say is in 1.5 rulebook, go to page 40, and there's a section called You. And understand that section, right? Understand that section and how that works because that's going to uh, do a lot of things and explain a lot of things, hopefully, and clear it up. So he's going to be attacking us. Now, it's important to note, um, if we were to block with Daredevil, he is still attacking us. He's not attacking Daredevil. Think of Daredevil just kind of like stepping in the way, right? I know this sounds convoluted right now, but this will help you down the road to understand a lot of things, but that's just an important side note. Anyway, we get to draw our card, which we didn't do that yet, right? Two, three, four, five. We get to draw our card. Hoo-hoo, let's go. It's a backflip. Now, we just drew that card, so we can play that card, right? It's now in our hand, so we can play it. So we're not going to defend or anything like that. We're going to let him attack us. So he's attacking for zero, um, plus zero, plus one, two. So he's attacking for two damage total. We are going to backflip. So when we would take any mad damage, we're going to prevent all of that damage. So we don't have to worry about any of that damage. And then he attacked. So now we get our encounter card. And we get to reveal. Uh, so it's an advance. Okay. So the villain is going to scheme. What does that mean? Basically, we take the two threat, that's, or I'm sorry, the two scheme mount, and we give him another activation card. So he's now activating again in case you have anything that, that triggers when 
uh, villains activate. This is an activation, but it's not an attack activation. Because uh, again, he's not attacking us. He's going to be scheming. So he's going to scheme two plus two more. So that's two, four onto the one is five total. So we have not advanced yet because right now it's at five out of six but we're getting very close for this advancing which is not great i'm not a big fan of that uh but that's everything right that's everything that that um that he does now it's back to our turn so with our turn what we're going to do is first thing i want to do is i want to exhaust daredevil to thwart two off of here so it's at five it would go down to three and after Daredevil Thwarts, we get to deal one damage to an enemy. Hey, look at that. One damage. Claw is knocked out, and stage two Claw comes in. And we have to read his entire card to make sure we understand it. Uh, so when you revealed, and he is going to be revealed right now, search the encounter deck and discard pile for the Immortal Claw and reveal it. Shuffle the encounter deck. So first, I like to look at the discard pile first, just so I make my life easier. But it's not in there. So we need the Immortal Claw. There it is. So the Immortal Claw is kind of a big deal. It kind of stinks. <laughs> now, Claw comes in with 18 life. This is a little bit more than he had before. This comes in with three threat on it, on the bottom here. And it also states that Claw gets plus 10 hit points when this, uh, plus 10 hit points. When the scheme is defeated, Claw would lose those 10 hit points. So he comes in with three. Claw is now going to get, where's another 10? 10 more hit points. So now he's up to 28 life. And this is an acceleration to or icon that looks just like this. So now this was going to go up by two instead of one, unless we get rid of this card, which uh, I don't think we're going to yet, unfortunately. All right. So that was our first thing with Daredevil. We do want to do some damage to Claw. What we're going to do is I'm going to thwart my one plus my one, two off of here. Yeah, we'll do two off of there. And then I'm going to throw away three cards to play a swinging web kick to deal eight damage on the claw. So it's, uh, what does he have? 28, 5, 6, 7, 8. So now he's down to 20 life. And then we're going to hold on to a swinging web kick uh, for the next turn. Okay, so now we're going to ready up. We're going to ready up Spider-Man. We're going to ready up Daredevil. And we're going to draw back up to five cards. So one, two, three, four, five. Okay. Now, end of our phase, now it goes to the villain phase. So this is going to go up by two. So it's five out of six. Uh, Claw is going to attack us again. Now, he still gets his additional boost card, uh, but he is going to get um, one base attack on this. So he gets his two cards. We could have Daredevil block this, but I don't think I actually want to do that yet. Um I don't think I want to. So what we'll do, because we have a lot of life left. So I'm okay with that. And I'd rather have Daredevil do a little bit of damage or something. So what we'll do is we'll take the hit. We get to initiate or respond. One, two, three, four, five. Or interrupt. We get to draw Aunt May, which is fine. He's going to do one, two damage, and he gets to put Weapons Runner into play. So we take two damage. So that's one two we still have seven life left now again weapons runner was put into play right put weapons runner into play he was not revealed so we don't do the surge ability because he wasn't revealed but we first did the villain activation now there's a minion so we still have to do the minion activation as well so he's going to deal one damage to us we're going to take that one damage that's fine uh, that's important note so if a minion comes in during the villain activation you still activate that minion then we get our face down encounter card. We get to reveal it. And it's Shadow of the Past. So Shadow of the Past, this is a good time to show this, um, is one of the cards that I tend to get a lot, which is always great to see. So when revealed, there's a lot of text. Reveal your set-aside nemesis minion and put it into play and engage with you. Reveal your set-aside nemesis side scheme and put it into play. Shuffle the rest of the set-aside nemesis counter uh, set into the encounter deck. If your nemesis minion does not enter the game this way, this card gains surge. That's important to note. A lot of people wonder what happens if your nemesis minion doesn't enter the game or whatever. This card would just gain surge. So we take those green cards we set aside. We put Vulture into play. And we put the side scheme into play. And these three other cards, uh, generally treachery, sometimes they're attachments, get shuffled in. First thing we have to do is put on here 
three threat on here and it says each player places a random card from their hand face down here when revealed and then there's a one defeated we'll worry about the one defeated in a second so this is going to get three threat on it oops and we take a random card so we're just going to shuffle these up and generally speaking i choose the third card down because that's just how i do things third card down is webbed up so we get to place it face down under there now vulture is a one three four uh, minion and he has quick strike after this minion engages your hero it attacks uh, so he's going to attack us again deal three damage again i'm just going to take this hit um now the villain didn't initiate an attack against us so again we, that's why we're not doing spider sense these are minions so we could tell because in the top here it says minion instead of villain one important to note with quick strike is a lot of people ask this if you're on your alter ego side does quick strike happen no you only get hit with quick strike when you're on a hero side, not your uh, other side. So, okay. So yeah, what, we, what we're going to do is just win. <laughs> um, so what I'm going to do is with Daredevil, I'm going to exhaust him to thwart two off of here. Now, when a mortal claw goes away, so does 10 of his hit points. So he's down to 10 life left. Now, Daredevil takes another consequential. He's up to three consequential out of three life, which means he is eliminated. So we get rid of Daredevil. Now, it's Spider-Man's turn. So we're going to throw away a web shooter to play a web shooter just so I can show this off. So it's upgrade. Um, this card states that um, it uses three web counters. Uh, enters play with three counters on them. When they are gone, you discard this card. So we can exhaust web shooter to remove one web counter from it to generate a wild resource. Wild resources can be anything that you want. I just want to do this so you can show what it looks like or show you what it looks like. So I want to play swinging web kick, but I only have two resources. So I can use these two. I can exhaust this card and remove one counter from it as a wild resource. So now I have all three and we can do swinging web kick to claw. So I have 10 life. He's down to eight left. Or I'm sorry, he uh, has down to two left because we did have 10 life. We did eight damage. That gets thrown away. Then we're going to exhaust to deal our last two damage to knock out Claw. Claw is defeated. And even though there are minions on the table, even though there's a side scheme, even though there's a main scheme, all that stuff does not matter. We just have to defeat the villain. That's it. So we have defeated the villain. We have won the game. That's it. We're golden. We're good. Um, and yeah, hopefully that was a good example and showed you everything of, of what to see uh, for a game of Marvel Champions. So hopefully that gives you a rough idea, right? It, it doesn't cover all the rules. It doesn't cover every situation or anything like that. But hopefully that gives you a really rough idea to get going in this game, right? To get started, to get playing. Um, and if there's more rules, never hesitate to ask. Myself, my community, we're always more than happy to help new gamers out, uh, help them understand the game, get them uh, going along. So you can either ask the questions here on this video, and I'm sure people will answer and I'll answer. Uh, you don't have to worry about that. Uh, we have a Discord, which is down in the description. You can join that Discord. I'm also part of another LCG Discord, which I'll put that one down there as well, that has a lot of rules experts in there. We're all more than happy to help you with any situation. There is no such thing as a dumb question. We've all been there. I, to this day, still don't fully remember what you means half the time. So never feel bad. There's rules I mess up on all the time too. So anything that, that we could do to help get more people in the hobby, that's what we want to do. And I hope this video helps do that, right? I hope I hope this um, I hope this helps you in your journey of Marvel Champions. Like I said, I also live stream on this channel and over on twitch.tv backslash d20 working, where hopefully you can follow over there as well. Um, turn on the alerts and notifications all that fun stuff because we do a lot of live streams of marvel champions and then you can watch the game be played right you can watch the game be played um i will play a little bit faster so i won't always talk about things but you can always interrupt the gameplay and say wait, wait, wait what was that what happened i'm more than happy to answer those questions lastly do me a huge favor make sure to hit the like button hit subscribe all the fun stuff it really helps with the channel i'll see you all next time